Hi everyone, welcome back to another video here on my channel. Today we are going to continue. I believe that we are on part 12 of our Hannah Carlson limited palette mystical themed color along. And we are going to continue coloring this page with the potion bottles. And I think that we are going to continue to add in more of this orangey yellow or gold color and kind of continue to bring balance across the page like we saw in the last couple of videos. And down here at the bottom we're going to add in some color and we're going to kind of try to finish off this bottle and see what kind of effect we can get going on here and how much balance we could actually create throughout this entire page. If you're just stumbling across this video and you are seeing that it is part 12, there is a whole playlist down in the description below where you will find all the previous videos in this series. And if you've got Hannah Carlson Magical Dawn, you can follow along with us on this same page and just watch each one of those videos in order. Or you can check out the video with the color palettes in it and you can choose a color palette and choose your own page out of any of the Hannah Carlson coloring books. So if you enjoy videos like this, please make sure that you do subscribe to my channel and also turn on your bell notifications. And please do make sure you give this video a thumbs up because it helps my channel out a lot. And let's go ahead and get into the video. I think that we are going to start with these little dangly things, look like ribbons or what have you that are hanging down here off the bottle top. And the colors we have are the same colors we've used in the previous videos to create all this goldy kind of looking color and that is our mahogany red and our Spanish orange which is PC1003 the mahogany red is PC1029 and then I have my canary yellow which is PC916 and I may add a little bit of this one in. This is the Carmine Red, which is PC926. I don't know yet. And then we have my favorite highlight color, which is Deco Pink. And that is PC1014. And we'll probably use that in the areas where we add more of the pink. I think that I used the Deco Pink and the Mahogany Red to um, or the mahogany red and then the deco pink to pull those areas through and then I used my hibic hibiscus stickles to go over that and I'm probably going to do that down here in the bottom of the bottle and for this top part we are just going to go ahead and do this with the golds so let's go ahead and get into this video and I am going to put this on a speed coloring and add some music right now.
finished these and I think that I'm done for now unless I come back and I add some glitter I may come back and touch these up but that is the color that I wanted there and I think it looks really good so originally up here at the top on the bottle topper I was gonna go do this area around here with the um, yellows and oranges and I'm thinking that it may look better if I do this in pink and I don't know in my mind I just kind of see this being very glittery and I think that it will really create more balance if we bring the colors that are down here back up into here and then this way I can do this crystal in golds which I think would be absolutely beautiful so I am going to go ahead and start with my mahogany red and I'm going to just come in here at the tips and in the corners because to create this look that I did down here with the pinks it's actually I think I mentioned it earlier but it's actually this color and then the deco uh, pink just kind of pulls it out so it's just a very little bit of this and I do it on all the edges so that I could come back and pull the color through And I'm using a very light hand so that I don't lay down too much pigment onto the paper because I want just enough to make like a lighter pink look like you see down here. So we're just going to line the edges here. And that might be enough. So now we're going to come back with our deco pink. And we are going to see how this turns out if we just kind of pull this through. And I want to kind of leave some white here. If you saw the previous videos where I kind of just use the white of the paper to create a certain look. That's what I'm trying to do here. Because I really just want it to look like the light is hitting this area of the bottle or the actual topper. And it makes it look even better when I add in the hibiscus stickles because the hibiscus stickles are not very opaque and the way that they go over and cover it's just really pretty but I'm just trying to get a couple layers down before I come back over it with glitter and I may not come over it with glitter until I get closer to the end of the video because then I'll have to kind of put it aside and let it dry so I'm pulling it through but I'm not pulling it all the way through and I'm kind of going with more pressure up in the corners to create more color there and this is how you create depth and dimension and I'm going to come back with my darkest color and I'm going to go over it again and probably pull it through one more time. So I'm going to come back with my mahogany red and I'm going to make sure that I've got lots of dimension up in here. You see how that just really changes the look when you just do this in the corners like this? It makes it look more like it is popping off the page. But when you do this, you need to make sure that you do have a sharp lead on your pencil. So that you could get into these little small corners and crevices here without 
your lead touching the areas that you don't want it to touch because it's much easier to lay down less than it is to lay down too much and have to lift it off the page especially when it's red because if you're using anything that has red in it it's going to be much harder to lift so we're coming back in and we're doing this again now that we've laid down more red and we're just gonna pull it through so that we don't have any harsh edges You also need to make sure that you've got a fairly sharp lead on the color that you're pulling through with, but not as much because you want to have a wide enough lead to be able to pull the colors through. And I think that is pretty and it's going to look even prettier when I put the glitter over the top of that. I hope I was in frame there. I think I might have been out of frame on the top part and if I was, I apologize. But I think y'all can see exactly what I did there. It's really pretty. And then I'm going to make it kind of pop because we are going to add golds in here. Now, this part, I really want to be able to use some gel pens. So I pulled out my Color It uh, glitter gel pens. I have this set and then I have the regular set too. If you're interested in these, I'll make sure that, as always, I have everything linked down in the description below. But I really love these because they go down very smoothly. And they've got names on them, so it's very easy to identify which one is going to be an actual true gold, which I think would, this, would be this one. It's called Glitter 24 Karat. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do all of these with the glitter. And I just figure they'll really stand out and be really beautiful. And then we're going to bring in that pink glitter on here. And then it's all just going to really pop. So I think that's really pretty. And then I don't know if maybe we should use, I think I'm going to do these with my glitter pen because I don't have any gold glitter. Oh, I think that's really pretty. It really makes them stand out. And then we'll do the center with gold and kind of make that look really gemstony like. And I think down here is going to be gold as well. And we are going to go ahead and color that part in with the gel pen too. That is so pretty. And it's different. So I kind of like it. Okay, so I think that we are now going to come in here. Should we do the bottom? Maybe we'll finish the top. Let's go ahead and do this, um, what looks to be like a gemstone up here at the top. And so we're really going to use the white here to benefit us. And so we are going to be very careful here about where we lay the colors. because we want to use this reflective area or we want to be able to use white as the reflective area to make it look more like a gemstone. Okay, so let's pull this in with a little bit of our canary yellow. That last color was the uh, Spanish orange. Okay. 
And then we want to add some dimension with our mahogany red. And we are gonna do this kind of like in the corners, like we always have before. Only in the areas where we want to create that dimension. I'm trying to just kind of picture this in my head where the uh, where I should color this to make it look like it is more balanced. So that's why I'm being a little quiet because I'm just trying to think about where I want these colors laid. Now I'm going to come back with my Spanish orange and I'm going to kind of pull this down. And what I'm doing is just kind of just pulling all this through everywhere. And I'm not covering that white. I just kind of want a smoother look here where I think I laid a little bit too much of the mahogany. Always remember that everything is fixable. I think that is really pretty. And honestly, that's my first gemstone that I've ever colored. <laughs> and I think I'm doing okay. I'm just kind of coming back in here and doing another layer so that we could have that uh, dimension here. And really doing it over here where I like laid a little bit too much so I'm kind of laying a little bit more to kind of smooth that out. And then I'll come back with my Spanish orange. And oh yeah, I love how this is looking. It's so pretty. Don't ever be afraid to color something that you've never tried before because that is how you learn. I just kind of imagined it in my head and started coloring. And I think I need a little bit more of the mahogany red in here. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with my white and I'm gonna go over the areas where I preserved that white in the paper and this is going to just bring it all through. Now when you're doing this, like I showed you in my last video, only go over the white. Don't come over the colors and pull it down into the white unless you want that color pulled down. In this case, I want to start here and make sure that the white is going to stay and then come back over here and burnish out the other colors. And if you think that you have pulled it down too much, then all you do is you come back with some Posca. Like, I think I had just too much white on the tip. And so like right there, I think that I just colored in or pulled it in too much. So what you can do in that case is you could take your Posca pen
and you can just add that white back in like that And voila, it is done. Then I'm just giving it a little bit more dimension here. And then down at the bottom. And I think I like it. Let me just kind of smooth it out with my canary yellow. You don't want to go over the Posca accidentally until the Posca dries. I really like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and come in with our hibiscus stickles. And I think if we learned anything in this video, we learned how to color a gemstone. And I had never even colored one before. So I learned right along with y'all. <laughs> Oh yes, this is so pretty. And I wish that I had some more gold to go over the... Uh... I can't believe that I do not have gold um, stickles. And of all the stickles that I have, I may go over those with the hibiscus. That is so super pretty. And let's go ahead and see what it looks like to add glitter over gel pens. So I'm, I have my sunburst. That's what I've been using throughout this whole bottle. And so we are going to lay the hibiscus on top of our gel pen and see if we can just, oh, how pretty. Oh my goodness. So we want to do it here. Well, our bottle top is going to be glowing off the page. And I may have to just end this video here and start editing it and get it up for y'all because now my glitter's gonna have to dry. <laughs> so, Oh, let me do this part here, too. Oh my gosh, gel pens and stickles mixed together. You guys, it's amazing. <laughs> and, oh, was I in frame? Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's my bottle topper and I think I'm in love. <laughs> I love it. It's so pretty. I think that we are going to go ahead and color the bottom part of this bottle because I don't think it'll take that long. So let's go ahead and we're going to come in here with our mahogany. So again on this part we are going to do the same thing we did on the rest of the bottle to continue bringing balance into this page and I just kind of want this center bottle to have all the colors in it. 
so that it's kind of pulling the colors from this side and from this side. And we're going to do something to this gold bottle over here. I just don't know what yet. But I think it may have some of the pink in it. I've not decided yet, but we'll figure it out when we get there. This page is just kind of coming to me little bits at a time, trying to decide what I want it to, what I want the final to look, you know, final look to look like. Okay, and then we're going to come in and we are going to pull this out. And I'm using the deco pink to do this like I was earlier. And I'm using a little bit harder pressure because there is a pretty big variance in these two colors. And so when they are spread further apart like that, they're harder to blend together. And I'm going to leave a little bit of the white just like I did previously. And the white is mainly going to stay like right in the center. And my lead on my pencil is not too sharp because I want it to be able to pull these colors down. So I'm going to come back with my deco red. And I'm going to lay quite a bit of it there because I really want it to stand out and just create some dimension up there. Let me see if I have another pink that's kind of in the middle, and I do. Yeah, I think that this is going to save me. This is the pink, just the plain pink. And I'm going to use this to kind of pull some of this down. And see, this is why you always need a mid-tone color, because sometimes it's more difficult in a bigger area like this to be able to pull out your darkest shade. And already it feels like I've got quite a bit of layers here, and they just don't want to blend for me. But we'll get them blended. A lot of it is the paper in this book. If, if the paper had more tooth, then it would be much easier. But this paper is more of a smoother paper in these books. I do love the paper in these books, though. Because I am a colorist that doesn't enjoy having to lay down a ton of layers to get the look that I want. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do the same thing and kind of pull that down and then do it on the bottom. And I'm going to do that on all of these. And then I'm going to come in with my pink and I'm going to pull this out again on these other ones. Leaving that little bit of white right there. You see how I kind of just left a little bit of white in the centers? I think that it might even have too much white in here. So we're going to pull this down a little bit more and kind of smooth this out. And then we're going to come back in with our deco pink and pull all of this out so that it looks much smoother. Don't always feel like you need to have your... Um, your white as your burnisher because you can always use your lightest color if you don't want to make things look too white. But I tend to like my white and sometimes I use my lightest color and the white at the same time. So now I'm just burnishing all the colors together. And here where I wanted to leave more white, 
Again, I'm making sure I don't pull those colors through too much. And that looks really good. So right here where we've got these dots and stuff, I think that we are going to, I think that these should be pink here. But I need a really sharp lead. So I'm gonna use my Doll 133, my favorite pencil sharpener. And I am going to sharpen the legs. Look at that beautiful lead it made. I love this pencil sharpener. It works beautifully on every pencil. And I don't know how I'm going to sharpen my white because I've got nothing left of it. So, let's see if it will still go in here. Oh my goodness. Not really. I'm going to have to get a different sharpener for that one. So, what are we going to do here? Let's see. I think that maybe... I should just go over these and straight up color these like this. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And then this down here so that they really stand out and kind of, again, balance. We pulled what we did in up here and then we pulled it back down here. So it kind of balanced it out. And then I think that these should be gold. And so I'm going to get out my gel pen, again, my uh, color it gel pen, the glitter 24 karat, and we are going to go over these. And I love that. And then we are going to get our hibiscus. Oh, I need to just do these two little dots right here in the center. That is so pretty. Okay, so now we're going to come in with our hibiscus stickles. And we are going to go over all of these. So pretty, and I think I'm going to do the same thing to these little teardrops that are hanging here. And then I think my bottle will be done. And actually, I think I'm going to add more glitter. Did I say I was done? Okay, so, oops, I think I forgot one over here. I love how this hibiscus, I'm going to have to order more hibiscus because I use that color so much. Wait, that wasn't the hibiscus, that was the sunburst. That was sunburst, guys, sorry. Getting my two favorite colors mixed up. Okay, so then we are going to come in here with our hibiscus and we are going to go over the rest of it. So we've got these teardrops here. Oh, I love how this bottle is turning out. It's gorgeous. And then I think we're going to do the center too. Because now I'm just getting carried away with glitter. But that's okay. Because what's better than a glittery potion bottle, right? And I'm laying it down and just kind of spreading it out. And since this color's not opaque, you'll still be able to see the white shadowy area in the center, which is fantastic. Just don't go over it too much with the glitter because then you'll take away from it. And you want to be able to keep everything there and all the hard work you did with your pencils to make it look reflective. So, yay, we finished the bottle. Look how pretty this bottle turned out. I absolutely love it. Y'all have to let me know what you think about this bottle in the comments. I hope you stuck around for the full video and you were able to see it come to life. 
I hope you all enjoyed this video. When we come back for the next one, we will continue and probably color in this or finish coloring in this gold potion bottle and you'll see what colors I add to that. Of course, we'll continue to add balance across the page, which is one of the main things that, um, that I've showed you in these tutorials. If you are just stumbling across my channel and you enjoy this video and you are seeing number 12 in the series, please make sure you check the description box down below because there will be a link there for the entire playlist so that you can watch these videos from the very first one all the way to this one and catch up with us. If you'd like the link to my Facebook group, it will be down in the description also. And as always, anything you've seen me use in this video, the color gel pens, the Posca pens, uh, the Prismacolors, the Prismacolor 150 uh, set is a really good deal right now on Amazon, so don't miss out on that one. And make sure you join my group so you can share all your color combinations. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to continue seeing my videos, please make sure that you do subscribe, turn on your bell notifications, and also give this video a thumbs up. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy coloring. Bye.